guys, my name is Trin and today I'm here to do my April wrap up. I am filming this really late. I think it's like the 11th right now and I have so much I have to do but I really want to take a few hours to film this wrap up video because I was supposed to film this last week but I was very busy and of course the lighting is fucking around with me because you know... <sighs> The weather hates me. Now for the month of April, I read five books and then for movies, there are three that I want to talk about and then for music, there are two albums that I want to talk about. So let's get started because I have two other videos that I need to film after this video. So, you know. I had to speed up this process. The first book that I read in April is called Fox Girl by Nora Octra Keller. Anyway, I read this book for school. It's for my English 469 class and that class is about race and disability. And then in April, we read this book and I actually finished the entire book because I had to do a facilitation on like the last 40 pages or so of this book. And of course, in order to get a good grade on my presentation, I guess, I need to finish the entire book. I did a paper on this book and I got an A, so I'm very happy about my grade. Trigger warnings for rape, sexual violence, slut shaming, and then fat shaming. This book is about a group of teenagers living in a town in Korea and the town is called America Town. In America Town, there are a lot of soldiers from the US and basically it's about the US soldiers but then also it's about the prostitutes in Korea. So like I said, this book follows three teenagers. One name is Hun Jin, the second one is Suki, and then the third one is Lobedo. So Hun Jin and Suki are prostitutes in this novel and then Lobedo is just their friend in a way. Well, more than friend, honestly. It's really complicated. The relationships are so mixed up and it's just really hard to keep up But Lobedo is just a very horrible person who pimps girls because he wants the money. He's very selfish So I'll talk more about him because I really want to talk about him. He's the worst This novel is just really about Hunchin and Suki and what they had to do to survive Basically, they're prostitutes because they don't have the resources to have, you know, a good home They had to sell their bodies. They had to do horrendous acts in the club you know to get the money and such and then of course this story is also about a relationship between a mother and a daughter i'm not going to tell you who's the daughter and such like that because you know if you read this book then you know who's the mom who's the daughter obviously but this book is just a lot and honestly i really enjoy this book i will say there are a lot of scenes that are very graphic like i said in the beginning i give you a trigger warning for rape and sexual violence and all these things and those scenes are incredibly graphic it's very very hard to read sometimes and i'm very fortunate to have the trigger warnings beforehand because just reading it was honestly tough but i was prepared before i you know read those chapters now for the characters honestly it's so interesting how i feel about the characters because in the beginning i really liked suki and i kind of hated hunjin but then towards the middle my feelings for those characters switch and then towards the end they kind of switch. It's interesting because it kind of shows you how well-rounded these characters are. They're not flat. They are forced into a situation and they all react differently. For Hun Jin, she feels like she needs to do these things because she was, you know, kicked out of her home. She has nowhere to go. So she knew that, or like, I don't, I don't want to say she knew, but basically she doesn't have a lot of choices and in a way she knew that she need to sell her bodies in order to get the money. And then for Suki, basically Suki's mom was gone for a while and Suki is just, you know, a very young girl and she doesn't have a lot of choices and she became a prostitute. But then in a way she kinda likes it, I guess, because she knew that she could get the money and she really likes money and such. And then for Hun Jin, she just, you know, doesn't like it, but she knows for a fact she needs to keep doing these things in order to get the money. And then let's talk about Lobeto. Can I talk about him real quick because I fucking and hate him. Lobeto is a horrible character. Like he's honestly the worst person ever in this novel and it's really interesting to see him in this book because there are times where I kind of feel bad for him but then I had to remind myself like no this guy has sold so many girls. He's willing to sell his mom for you know the money. His friends for the money is ridiculous and he's so selfish. All he cares about it's the money. He does not care about the fact that his friend was being raped. There is a scene towards the end where he almost raped the main character. This book is a lot, but at the end, I learned a lot from this book. It did take me a while to- well, actually, I finished this early before everyone else, I think, but it was still a lot to read and like I said, I really enjoyed this book because I learned so much. I learned that these women don't have choices, don't have a lot of options, you know, so they had to do whatever they had to do in order to survive. I give this book four out of five stars. I 
really really enjoyed this book and I had a lot of fun discussing this book with my friends and with my classmates in class obviously because this book is for school this was a really good read and i'm going to mention this book in a book recommendation video i think it's already up it should be up before this video so i'll link it in the cards and then also in the description box below the next book that i read is daisy jones and the six by taylor jenkins reed i feel like a lot of people read this book in april and i find it very funny you know because i read this book in april too i actually buddy read this book buddy read this book with sandy from sandy reads a lot this is the first book that we read together in april because there is another the book that we read together towards the end of the month now for trigger warnings drug and substance abuse and then of course abortion if you don't know what this book is about i'm very shocked because i feel like for the past two months i have seen this book everywhere on twitter on youtube instagram it's literally everywhere and honestly i don't mind because i actually really enjoyed this book daisy jones and the six is about a band called daisy jones and the six so in this novel we learn about daisy jones you know who's the lead singer of this band and then we learn about the six originally the six is supposed to be a band sometime in the 1970s this producer put Daisy Jones and the Six together to create this popular band in the 1970s. This book is very very different from the other books I have read because this is actually told in oral history. So basically it's a compilation of interviews combined into one and then we just read what happened from the very beginning you know with Daisy Jones but then also with the Six and the band members and there's so many characters and oh my god it's actually a lot now that I think about it. There are so many characters. The thing that stands out to me the most are you know two characters Daisy and then Billy who both have problems with addiction so Billy is actually like the leader of the band the six because he writes so many songs he basically writes almost all of the songs in the albums and then he does a lot of work when it comes to the album you know if you read the book then you know about Billy so I feel like towards the beginning of the novel reveals that he has problem with addiction I love his rap just seeing him constantly battling his problem with addiction honestly i felt bad the entire time but at the same time i can't help but think like oh my god this is real this is what people in real life are going through you know because i know that there are a lot of reviews where they talk about the accurate representations when it comes to characters and people who have problems with addiction reading billy's life and his thought process because there are multiple times where he had to tell himself to leave the bar. Daisy on the other hand is a lot. Honestly I don't want to talk too much about this because I feel like I might say the wrong thing but I know that other people have said that the representation for Daisy and Billy were really good when it comes to their problems when it comes to you know addiction and substance and all those things but let's talk about the band and the music and the fact that this takes place in 1970s because I love 70s rock. Of course the book of this novel is about how the band makes their album and Billy spends a majority of this novel creating an album and then of course Daisy and Billy write a lot of songs and I kind of love reading about that process you know the creative process the writing the songs process and then producing the songs kind of thing of course there's always drama behind the scenes because this is a band obviously there is favoritism you know like Billy and Daisy are like the favorites of the band members and the other people do not like that there is a character who have huge problems with Billy because Billy is only seen as the leader because Billy writes so many songs and Billy produced these songs and just a lot. A part of me is like oh my god this is kind of real because I'm sure there is a lot of problems behind the scenes when it comes to creating albums and of course when you're in a band there's always complications and it's just difficult and William's home. <laughs> the characters oh my god there are so many characters in this book. I really enjoy reading all of them and I really enjoy reading how everyone has their own perspective when it comes to just like one event. The problems that they go through and then their responses are all real it just feels very authentic. Damn honestly let me Taylor Jenkins Reid is so good when it comes to writing historical fiction. So, you know, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo is like a huge success and she is so good at creating these characters and making them feel real. And of course, by the end, it just hit me that this is not real. This band is not real. This did not happen in the 1970s. The same thing with Evelyn Hugo. She's not real. That kind of hurt a little bit. I learned a lot from this novel honestly. It's not my favorite book from Taylor Jenkins Reid but by the end I learned a lot when it comes to this novel. I learned that you cannot force someone to go to rehab. You cannot do that and sometimes 
Staying sober is hard. I'm just really grateful for this novel, honestly. Even though I don't love it, I give this book four out of five stars. I still really, really enjoy this book and I learned a lot from it and that's all I can ever ask for. All right, let's quickly talk about two films that I watch in April. So the first one is Captain Marvel. So I decided to watch this film with my boyfriend. Um, I bet he's very happy when he's watching this video. But basically we saw this movie in the month of April and it was actually really good. Oh my God, let me tell you about this film. So this film is about this woman named Carol and she's Captain Marvel, you know, played by Brie Larson. I'm not gonna say much but you need to watch this film before you watch Avengers Endgame because there is a reason why this film comes out before Avengers Endgame. The thing that stood out to me when it comes to this film is how powerful Captain Marvel is. Literally, this woman is so powerful. Like by the end, she just fucks shit up and it was just so easy for her. Of course, her hair looks fantastic throughout this entire film. It's very funny. I really enjoyed this film. I really enjoy learning a lot about Captain Marvel and I really hope she's going to get like another film. I'm pretty sure she is. I mean, I really hope so because I would love to learn a lot about her, obviously. So when it comes to this movie, what I give? I give it a four out of five stars. I really enjoy it, obviously. It's not my favorite movie from you know the Marvel franchise but I liked it it was good it was enjoyable now the most important film in April in my opinion is Homecoming a film by Beyonce it's on Netflix Queen B is back if you don't know I love Beyonce I fucking love her and I'm so glad that she's back in my life because I miss her so much if you don't know what this is about it's basically her Coachella performance throughout the film you know we see her performance at Coachella last year but then we also see some behind the scenes stuff so we see how she was pregnant with twins how that pregnancy has a huge impact on her because afterwards she has to train really really hard for her Coachella performance but then also her inspiration when it comes to this performance because it's all about black excellence it's about black colleges if you're a huge fan of Beyonce you need to watch this you will love it like I know for a fact you will love it but if you're not a huge fan of Beyonce's if you don't know anything about her if you don't listen to her music don't watch this because you might not enjoy it like oh my god Jonathan almost killed me <laughs> when we watched it together and I I felt bad. He thought that this film was gonna be about her life and all these things but no. Homecoming is literally about her Coachella performance in 2018. I loved it. I've watched it multiple times because it's so good because you get to see her Coachella performance. If you don't know, her performance at Coachella last year was one of the best things out there because she has worked so hard and everything was so good the music is good the choreography is good the lighting the costumes everything about this shit is so good so you gotta watch it if you haven't watched it yet i give this a five out of five stars obviously i love beyonce i always loved her i love that she works really hard but then also she's very talented and she's a perfectionist she's hardworking. everything about her is amazing so of course i highly recommend this film if you want to watch it like it's so good it's two hours long but it's so good. The third book that I read in April is Chrissy's Big Day and this is the sixth book from the Babysitter's Club, like the graphic novel series, I guess. This is the sixth one and I read it in April. I really enjoy it. Basically, in this story, Christy, who is the leader of the Babysitter's Club, her mom is marrying her fiance, so Christy will have a stepdad. And here's the thing, when it comes to this novel or like this graphic novel, you know, there are pictures, I really, really relate to the main character because there are 15 years ago, I watched my mom marry her fiance and you know, he's my stepdad now. It's just so good. Like this is so cute, it's so good. It's very heartwarming and I love it so much. I love the characters, I love the interactions and everything. So basically in this novel, like I said, the main character's mom is marrying someone else but then of course the girls have this problem of babysitting like a bunch of people at once because it's the wedding week kind of thing, you know? So everything is crazy and a lot of things are happening and I keep forgetting that the girls are literally like 12 or 13. They're very young. I keep forgetting that they're not in high school. I don't know why, but I always think that they're in high school, but no, they're in middle school. So yeah, I really enjoyed this graphic novel. I really loved it. I loved it. Like I really, really loved it. After I finished this, I was smiling the entire time. So I give this a five out of five stars, obviously. You really need to read the first five in order to read this one. This is the sixth one. And I believe there's more coming out afterward. I cannot wait to get more graphic novels when it comes to this series because I really love this, okay? Like, 
they make me happy. The fourth book that I read in April is An Illustrated History of Notable Shadow Hunters and Denizens of Downward by Cassandra Clare, illustrated by Cassandra Jean. If you don't know, this is actually a companion book to the Shadow Hunter Chronicles. So this book is literally about the characters from the Shadow Hunter Chronicles. So it is divided by the series in the Shadow Hunter Chronicles. So we have the Infernal Devices, the Last Hours, the More Instruments, and then of course Tales from the Shadow Hunter Academy, the Dark Artifices. This book is basically about the characters characters like I said. So on the right side we have the portrait of said character and then on the left we have the description. I read this entire thing and it's not even that difficult honestly but oh my god I love learning about the characters because there are a lot of characters that I've already known you know because I've read all of the books but there are some new characters that I have never read about or I've never really heard of and it's mostly from the last hours part you know. The description is so funny like there are some that's predictable and such but there are some that's just out of this world honestly it's so funny let me try to find one where it's kind of funny and not too spoilery i guess so this is about jace from the more instrument series taking a page out of clary Frey's book jace adopted a regular artistic practice in between training and institute business jace has turned more seriously to music teaching himself challenging pieces and even composing original works despite a shared interest in music jace and simon lewis have only collaborated once on a song title come back meow dedicated to magnus bain's cat i thought it was hilarious like when i read that i laughed so much and i took a picture of it and i sent it to sandy if you're a huge fan of the shadow hunter chronicles by cassandra claire i highly recommend getting this book it's worth it i guarantee you it's worth it it's so good it's so funny but then of course it just looks so pretty and it looks stunning on my shadow hunter shelf because you know i have a section for cassie claire of course i gave it a five out of five stars it was so fucking good okay it was really short like it's not a full novel but I read it so it counts okay now there are two albums that I really 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 want to talk about for this video so the first one is called when we all fall asleep where do we go so this is by Billie Eilish and here's the thing my relationship with Billie Eilish is something else okay so I've heard of her okay I've heard of Billie Eilish but I never really listened to her music but I was at work and one of my co-workers mentioned the song I love you by Billie Eilish and she said that it was like the most beautiful song ever it was so good that night I went home I listened to the song it's called I love you it is like the second to last song of the album and I cried I cried the entire time I just sat there and I cried. I'm like, damn, I really had to give her album a try. And I did. So this is her first album and it's excellent. It's so good. I love the fact that there are, what, 13 songs? So it's not too long. If you listen to the entire thing, it's roughly 40 minutes long. So it's not even that long in my opinion. And I listen to this often. I love it. I love every single song. I mean, there's some songs that I love more than the others, but overall, I think this is such a good album. Billie Eilish has a beautiful voice and I didn't even know that she could sing, you know? So I was taken by surprise and like I said, I love this album. I've listened to it multiple times in April. If you're skeptical about Billie Eilish, then I highly recommend listening to this album. If you don't know which song you should start or like if you want to listen to just one song from her, I highly recommend I Love You. I think it has become one of my favorite songs of all time is that good and I love it so much and I feel like the lighting is too bright right now so yeah this album I gave it five out of five stars is so good I love it so so much and I highly highly recommend this album the second album that I want to talk about is called was it real by Olivia O'Brien I've always loved Olivia I've listened to her music for almost two years I want to say basically her first EP came out in 2017 I listened to it I love it so here's the thing about this album when it dropped and I looked through the track list I was very surprised to see the track list basically there are 10 songs she has released six singles in this album there are six songs that i've already heard of because every time she released a single i listen to it because you know i'm a dedicated fan so when i listen to this album there were six songs that i already knew so there are four songs four new songs i guess for me and that's not enough to enjoy an album it's really not so when i listened through this entire thing i was just slightly disappointed that she released so many singles before this album because i feel like there's a few that she could have waited until the album you know like she didn't really have to release them as singles before the album she could have released three songs as 
singles and then give us the album. Why did she release so many songs from the album before the album came out? Do you know what I mean? So by the end, I was like sitting there like, wow, I was waiting for this album and I was kind of disappointed that there's only four new songs for me and for the people, her fans, you know, because we have already listened to the other six. But other than that, the songs are really good. There are so many good songs. And when it comes to the four new songs, there's like one that I really love. Like it's called We Lie to Each Other. That was a really good one. Inhibition is actually really good. I don't know. I feel like I have to listen to the album again. I do listen to it often, but there's a few times I skip or if I'm not listening to Olivia O'Brien, I either listen to Billie Eilish or Beyonce. So that was me in April basically when it comes to music. So when it comes to this album, was it even real? I give it a four out of five stars. But I feel like if you have never listened to her music, then give it a try. Maybe you like it. But for me, I had to give it four out of five stars because of that problem. The fact that she released six singles before the album comes out. The last book that I finished in April is The Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu. This book was very exciting for me because I love Cassandra Clare and The Shadow of Hunter Chronicles. I pre-ordered this book and it came in the mail and I was so excited and I basically read this book with Sandy from Sandy Reads a lot. So this is the second book that we read together in April and I really really enjoy my experience reading this book with her. I have a reading vlog is filmed. It has not been edited yet, but there is a reading vlog for this book. And also, I'm planning to film a book review and discussion for this book because when it comes to Cassandra Clare, I don't have as shit, okay? I do like the full shebang. So there will be a different video dedicated to this book and I will film that video in like an hour or so. Hopefully it will be up sometime in May. I'm very busy when it comes to school, okay? So please be patient with me. This is the first book of a trilogy. It's called The Eldest Curse and it's basically about Magnus and Alec Lightwood and how they first became a couple and they're on vacation in Europe and then of course Magnus is framed as this leader for this demon worshipping cult called the Crimson Hand I believe. Basically a few years ago he created this club Damn it, it's not a club, it's a cult. But basically, he created this cult, but he does not remember, you know, how and why and all these things. And that's all I can say, honestly. In this book, we get to see so many characters from the Shadowhunter Chronicles. I'm happy that they're back. I miss them so much. Obviously, it's not my favorite book from the Shadowhunter Chronicles. What did I give this? I give this a four out of five stars, I think. Yeah, four out of five stars. I'm not gonna talk much about it because I will have an entire video for this book, okay? Just know that I actually really, really enjoyed this book. It was a lot of fun to read and I love learning so much about Magnus Bane because there's a lot to learn about him but I also love reading about Alec and his relationship with Magnus and all these things and then of course I love seeing the characters from the other series again. It was just a lot of fun reading this book and of course it's always nice to read this book with my parapetai Sandy obviously if you don't know she's my parapetai. So yeah I give this book four out of five stars. There is an entire video for this book coming up hopefully in a week or two. I don't know. The last film that I want to talk about is Avengers Endgame. So this movie came out at the end of April and I didn't watch it until the beginning of May but I'm just gonna put this movie in because I just really want to talk about it. The first half I was really really bored like I was dying in the movie theater and remember this movie is three hours long but then the last half really made it worth it in my opinion. There are some parts I like, there are some parts I don't like. I will say that I feel like you will probably enjoy this movie a lot if you have watched all of the MCU films before this one. <laughs> um, I don't know what to say, like I really don't. So yeah, I watched this film three hours long. I watched it by myself. At the end I gave it a four out of five stars because like I said the first half was fucking horrible. I mean, it wasn't that bad, but I was dying in the movie theater, okay? But then the last half was really good, so, you know. You gotta do what you gotta do. So, the video's over. Thank God. I'm, it's hot in my room. I have two more videos that I need to film after this. I have so much I have to do, but hopefully everything will work out, and I really hope I won't have a breakdown. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye!